Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this weekend, Saturday, April 8th, 2023. It's about 4.27 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. Back from our little uh, adventure, me and Miss Mimi's, that is. We went up to Oregon here and uh, just chatted with the folks around the Gold Beach area of Oregon in relation to uh, tsunami evacuation routes and whatnot. We'll get into that a little bit later on, uh, later tonight. I'll kind of explain what we're doing up there. But for now, latest earthquake, a uh, looks like a 0.9, very small earthquake into the West Coast area. Also know some movement up here into the Aleutian Trench with the uh, Alaska area showing a little bit of movement up here uh, just off the Aleutian Trench region. Make sure I got everything set up. Yep, back. good to be back on the home front here. There's definitely no place like home. And um, I definitely enjoy my microphone here a lot better than the uh, laptop. All right, 5.1 coming in. Just uh, looks like earlier this afternoon, 66 kilometers deep into the subduction zone area here. Uh, looks as though we did have some prior movement, uh, a little bit shallower early this morning, a 3.4. But uh, kind of looks like we're getting a trend of some uh, deeper movement quakes up here along the Aleutian Trench area. We'll keep that in mind here with some further movement, potentially the deep earthquake activity does tend to trigger uh, some surface quaking out there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, over here around the uh, Japan area, this earthquake coming in, it looks like about 8 o'clock this morning, a 4.2, somewhat deep here, 68 kilometers into the Japan Trench. The Kurokamachaka Trench for now looks pretty quiet. Uh, glance here at the EMSC model. And the USGS combination here uh, definitely showing some elevated activity here all across the um, the plates here, specifically around the Indonesia area and areas to the west. Look at this trail of movement up around the Himalayas, stretching down southward. For now, this is all fairly small quake activity. Uh, I'm not seeing anything big being picked up here. Looks like the largest was a 4.6 in the India region around the Andaman Sea um, earlier this morning, about four o'clock, but definitely noticeably up, uh, noticeably active here across the area. There's much more earthquake activity than what the USGS is showing here. Of course, there's quite a few threes and twos in the mix within that area. Uh, definitely looks like things are progressing across that area for now. Uh, but there's a but what's kind of odd is there's quite a few fours here with no large quake activity and it's all spread out fairly equal um, and we have been watching this area around the java trench for some potential larger scale movement we just haven't seen it yet so we'll still kind of keep an eye uh, even with this general movement taking place we'll keep an eye on this area uh, for some larger scale movement 4.4 into the northern sumatra area indonesia 159 kilometers deep some deep activity here uh, very shallow earthquake activity upstream where that 4.6 in the uh, uh, Nicobar Islands area is where the Andaman Sea region um, take, uh, is, is listed here on the map. It's pretty shallow, about 11 kilometers deep there. Uh, let's see, Papua New Guinea been showing some activity as well throughout the afternoon. 4.4, a couple fours and even some fives out here scattered out and about the area. Uh, this one here, the most recent one, though, fairly deep, 100 kilometers deep. So we'll keep an eye on this area here with all the elevated uptick. It looks like we did see a pretty deep earthquake south of Japan. Not showing up here on the USGS model, uh, but the specific quake I'm chatting about is going to be this... Uh, well, it's going to be this 4.2 here into the Izu Trench, 400 kilometers deep. Really haven't seen too much adjustment upstream, but we'll watch this area as well, considering the deeper movement uh, that took place earlier. Uh, looks like before noontime. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Mariana Trench did see a little bit of activity, looks like. 177 kilometer deep, 4.4 early this morning. I don't think we've seen anything uh, popping off here yet, as far as the surface activity goes, but we'll keep that... Uh, Keep that region in check as well. What do we got down here near Fiji? Pretty shallow earthquake activity just to the northwest of Fiji. 5.3, 24 kilometers deep. Also some shallow activity 
up around the uh, uh, Saboa area, 4.4 into the, uh, somewhat into the Tonga Trench at about 41 kilometers deep. Down here along the Kermadec Trench, nothing's showing up here uh, for now. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of activity here, even with the um, EMSC model. So let's get the GeoNet servers involved here and see what's uh, taking place. All magnitudes here across New Zealand. An hour ago, the latest quake, a 2.2 North Island, just outside of the Taupo supervolcano. Looks like we had one, 1.1 there at the Taupo supervolcano. Uh, most of the activity generally scattered across the area. Let's check out the earthquake drums here. See what we have taken place. Not a whole lot. Um, New Zealand's been awfully quiet. I, I know they had some activity here. Um, a couple days ago, but for the most part, things are relatively quiet there in New Zealand. A look at the volcano drums, uh, including the Taupo Super Volcano. Uh, it doesn't even look like it picked up that one pointer. So things are uh, relatively calm here across the areas of the volcanoes and the uh, general vaults out here in New Zealand for now. Definitely for now, but uh, it will pick up, I'm sure. South America area, look, nothing going on here according to the USGS, and uh, most of the activity here today, all in the two and three department. Not a whole lot popping out there for now. We are getting a couple deeper earthquakes there into the Peru Chile Trench. Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic area. We did see a 4.1 coming in early this morning into the Dominican Republic, five kilometers deep, and uh, getting a swarm of activity once again around the Puerto Rico Trench, or the Puerto Rico mainland area on the southwestern edge here with quite a few twos and threes kicking up throughout the region today uh, including a 2.8 just now uh, let's see here middle america trench and areas along the uh, mexico coast mostly threes out here the west coast here in california let's go ahead and check this out and see what we have uh kicking up out here i know we've seen a little uh, earthquake here into the Cobb Mountain region last night and also just earlier uh, this afternoon it looks like 1435 so a couple hours ago or 1425 excuse me that uh, coming into the Cobb Mountain area this is the Calpine hydrothermal operations here and uh, looks like this specific region is very active Let's see what we got here for the satellite imagery. I'm going to show you guys where this uh, activity has taken place very close to the... Um, well, there's there's a whole process here involved, folks, where they inject raw sewage below uh, to create... Well, below the surface, there's obviously some heated material still very active here across the region as far as volcanic activity goes underneath this area. Uh, but their whole process involves uh, injecting raw sewage below... Uh, to create some steam that uh, creates energy that powers uh, quite a few homes there in the Bay Area. There's one of the facilities out here, but there's many of them. And uh, most of these earthquakes here occurring very close nearby quite a few of those operations today. So that's what's going on there in the Cobb Mountain area of Northern California. One earthquake here near Arbuckle, California. There is the um, Great Valley Thrust Fault here that runs along the west side of the valley. But this one's relatively shallow, uh, 1.7 kilometers for a 2.0. That one coming in about 1 o'clock this morning. Uh, Northern California, southern end of the Cascadia, 2.4 from last night. Uh, I was up here into the Gold Beach area. Beautiful area of the uh, southern Oregon area. Checking out uh, tsunami evacuation routes and signage and whatnot. But I'm going to cover that a little bit later on uh, this evening. I just got home a little bit ago. I'm going to try and get my brain uh, together here and um, just unpack and whatnot. But we'll definitely cover that later tonight. I'll explain exactly what I was doing up there and what I found. Uh, a little bit of movement down into the Southern California area today. Mostly uh, microquake movement. Don't see anything above 2.5. Nothing going on across the San Andreas Fault for now. The rest of the country, fairly quiet. A little small microquake activity yesterday into the uh, Oklahoma and the Missouri area it looks like 
So yeah, a couple different uh, areas to watch, it looks like, with the elevated, deeper movement here across the area of the Indonesia region. This could be pointing towards uh, some further larger scale movement taking place here across the Mediterranean. Um, let's see what we got here for the last seven days of uh, 4.5 and above. A couple areas here have been hit around the Java Trench and the Andaman Sea area. Uh, could be seeing some further larger scale aftershock activity around the Turkey region looking at this map. Uh, West Coast, you know, California sits on a major plate boundary, but somehow I think it's fused together. I mean, I, that, might, that might just be a, a statement, but who knows? Maybe it's true or maybe it's just so locked here that uh, any kind of movement across the West Coast could trigger a couple big ones out here. It's been awfully, uh, awfully quiet here across the region of the west coast i know we did see um 4.5 back in late march we also did see a uh, four pointer around the bay area that's going to be that 4.4 uh that earthquake looks like it was revised off onto the uh, uh tres pinos fault it looks like or very close to the southern end of the calaveras fault earlier this month uh, but even then, this is still a very small amount of earthquake activity in general uh, for the West Coast. Everything else is picking up around it, so it's possible we could see uh, California start showing some movement here. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. The Big Island of Hawaii, a little bit of a spotty activity movement today around Kilauea and also the Pahala area. Only 12 earthquakes going on there across the map. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. The latest seismograph stations here across the area shows a little bit of microquake activity here across Maple Creek. This is in the northwest corner of the park. Notice these small spikes indicative there of some very small earthquake activity, but uh, it is showing up across uh, local seismograph stations here, but very localized, so nothing big going on. Those are probably all below the 2.0 threshold. And uh, looks like another earthquake over here near the promontory showing up here across portions of the southern end of the Yellowstone area. But aside from that, everything fairly, everything's fairly quiet. Uh, where'd my um, map go? One of these is going to be open, right? I know. Bad habit. Keeping those windows open all the time. Nothing showing up here across Yellowstone. Of course, it's a weekend. They'll get to those tomorrow or uh, Monday. Excuse me. Keep thinking today, Sunday. It's been a long couple days here for me, uh, but probably get to those on Monday unless it's above 2.5. Uh, aside from that, uh, yeah, nothing really shows up here across Yellowstone unless it's above that threshold. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here. Space weather activity. I'm kind of curious to see. I know I skipped out on this morning's update, but we'll make up for that later tonight. We'll kind of chat about the Oregon stuff. Uh, space weather activity. We do have a good sized sunspot here, 3272. On the southwestern or southeastern limb, looking fairly promising here in terms of unstable magnetic structure. There's a lot of intermixing here of the colors, indicating the um, the unstable conditions with that uh, sunspot 3272. Uh, right now, we do have a 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 30, and 5% chance for an X flare. Uh, here's the UV filter ray looking at it right now. It looked a little bit more promising as far as the brightness go. Uh, of course, we did have a little bit of flaring last night. I forgot about that. Uh, but these things can spark up out of the blue. This is about our only main sunspot right now to watch for some uh, possible significant flaring. Uh, over the past 24 hours, it looks like we did have a, at least one M flare here peeking out around the M2.9. Uh, couple other sea flares here and that's all uh, coming from the sunspot that I just mentioned. It's definitely looking more active here uh, into the uh, day today. So keep an eye on this area. The rest of the sunspots here look fairly stable. We're saying goodbye on the southwestern limb to that former sunspot here. Just about off the visible disk. But for now this we'll watch this one. It's looking actually fairly uh, fairly complex. All right folks I uh, just want to jump in here and uh, let everyone know I'm back here on the home front, back in the Earthmaster office, the earthquake office that is, and uh, surprised the stream held up for so long. Normally it seems like when I go places, the stream would go down, so that's kind of why I was a little, a little secretive for a little bit. 
Uh, but then I was like, ah, we'll, we'll, we'll show folks where we're at. But anyway, check in, uh, check back in a little bit later tonight, folks, and we'll uh, chat about um, what we're doing up there in the uh, southern end of the Cascadia and some folks that we chatted with. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening with that update. Take care.